Of World eCustody is here. This is lesson number seven with NGO Radio Terrace. Free lessons for all ages and all levels reporting live from Durham, North Carolina. Like I said, lesson seven here is going to be all about touch and tuning. Uh, I'm going to be showing you some techniques that I picked up along the way. And hopefully that sheds some light on an off-glazed-over subject in the world of drumming. Super important to know how to tune your drums, right? Sort of like not knowing how to tune your bass or knowing how to tune your guitar or any instrument for that matter. The drums are like a chromatic instrument, just like any t tonal instrument that's out there. Perceived in a different way because of the human ear and because of the limitations of the shell of the drum. But nonetheless, it's a chromatic instrument that's capable of being tuned to notes if you would like it to be. Most of us don't. I don't necessarily tune my drums to any particular note. But I'm going to show you some techniques. I, had a, I have a great friend and a drum mentor named Jeremy Bean Clemens. And he showed me many, many moons ago how to tune some drums in a way that really stuck with me. And that's sort of his way of looking at... And, and of course... It's been many years since this, this great friend of mine has actually imparted these words to me. So I have sort of resynthesized this concept from my own sense. So that's what you're going to be getting from me today is this resynthesized concept of drum tuning that I picked up from Jeremy Bean Clemens, which is to say that when I'm in a musical setting where I'm going to be playing more beats, more pocket, more groove. I'll tune my drums a certain way. If I'm going to be playing in a s scenario that's more straight ahead oriented, I'll tune my drums a different way. A lot of it has to do with the tones I'm going for. Uh, right now, I'm actually sorry to say that I'm going to have to give up the tuning that I have right now on these drums for the sake of education because I really like the way they sound. But I'm going to kind of destroy the tuning I have and rebuild it for your very ears. So let's start with it. If I were tuning these for a, and like I said, they sound good right now, but if I were theoretically tuning them for a jazz scenario, they would be pretty close to what they are right now. I, I have them tuned for a jazz scenario. But not every drum is high-pitched and super tonal like it would be in a jazz context. And in fact, what I prefer to play in a jazz context is something closer to what I would play tuning-wise in a groove or pocket context. But nonetheless, let's just hear how it starts to sound when I manipulate the drums. So a, a good way of tuning <coughs> is to go from across the drum, one up, across the drum, one up, across the drum, one up, across the drum until you get back to the, the lug that you started at. A lot about touch and about tone is how you hit the drum versus I like to try and use a tom-tom for a good example because it's more tonal. I am trying to draw the sound out of the tom rather than beat the sound into it. Right? You hear the difference in all the different ways that I'm touching it. Let's hear the floor tom. So I like the floor tom to be just a little bit more dead anyway. So that's why the floor tom isn't giving you as much of that tonality that the tom tom, the, the, the mounted tom is giving you. But nonetheless, I can still demonstrate how I can choke out the sound or I can bring the sound out of the drum.
Same thing with the symbol. We can have tonality with the symbol. Depending on how tightly you hold the stick and depending on where up the stick or down the stick you hold it, you can get different tones. Let's hear it. You see how when my grip was more stiff, you get a, a much more um, impactful tone, an impactful tap or attack, if you will. My hand is more open. It's a lighter, more um, ephemeral touch, if you will. definitely matters. Um, all right, let's give it let's give it a tune. So, you, you know, you kind of caught me there. I didn't go in perfect uh, counterclockwise order as I said I would. Um, but on my way back tuning up, I'm going to, right? So here we are. The snare is dead. What I like to do from this standpoint is just give each one uh, a full turn, not going in that random order I was going in. I'm literally going to go clockwise and just do this real quick to get it up to a point. Because right now there's a, there's like a, a wrinkle in the head and when there's a wrinkle in the head that means it's so dead that you can't even really consider it tuned at all right so now the drums fully detuned which sounds kind of cool snare sounds like that. All right, so I'm going to pick this lug right here that's at about four o'clock to start my tuning process, right? Like I said, I just do Maybe not even a full rotation, just just kind of like three fourths or half to three fourths of a rotation around three sixty degrees. 
until until the lugs start to to take into the threading all right now once at this point i get back to my four o'clock standpoint now i'm going to go across and then up across and then up across and then up across and then up so on and so forth so now i go across and i'm only doing like a quarter turn here up quarter turn across a quarter turn up quarter turn across quarter turn up quarter turn across quarter turn up quarter turn across now we're here back at our four o'clock right across all right now we're back at four o'clock let's see here hear how it sounds totally different So that's a really, really great sound for some rock drums. Let's give it a couple more cranks up. Alright, so I'm just, I'm liking it now. Obviously, if I weren't teaching right now, I'd stop the tape and, and go back and listen to it to make sure that that's the case. But yeah, as of right now, I'm liking the way it sounds.
All right, let's check the bottom head. See what happens with the snare in the bottom head. Okay, so what's going on with the bottom head is the bottom head is, is, is a lot lower than the top head. And this is what this drum sounds like when we do that. And this is where Bean's suggestion came in, which was that if I'm going for a super tight, almost like pocket, gospel or hip hop sounding snare, tighten the batter side head as much as you possibly can and keep the bottom side loose. You'll get more of a pop out of any drum if you do that. Tighten the batter side, which is the hit side that you hit, and keep the bottom side loose. Now, when it comes to the bass drum, Bean's suggestion was to keep the, the non-batter side almost wrinkled at one part. Do this all to taste and to musicality with whatever situation you're playing in. I'm going to go ahead and detune the top head and tighten up the bottom head. Let's hear how that sounds. Okay, now that's kind of interesting. The bottom head is completely tight and the top head is absolutely untuned. My visual goal here is to just get the wrinkle out of the center. Okay, so right around this point, I've gotten the, the wrinkle out of the head. The bottom head is completely choked, and the top head is fairly loose because I, it, it's just ha it just has no wrinkle in it. It's not by any means completely tight. But this is how you get a soft-feeling snare top. And a soft-feeling snare top is what I think one might consider more jazzy. Even though I prefer a, a, a harder snare top, I prefer a, a much more crack, cl crackly sounding snare in my straight ahead playing, this sound right here might satisfy some as the jazz drum sound.